everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is an interesting one, how to interview consultants for your agency. Now you would think that as recruiters, we're amazing at interviewing. We know how to interview for our agency, we interview people all the time, we help our clients interview better, we help our candidates prep for interviews. Honestly, I've never seen it. I go into agencies all the time and their recruitment process is rubbish. And they hire the wrong people, they're not thorough enough. I mean, honestly, it just all goes tits up. So this is why I'm doing the video today, is to kind of recap on some very important points that you probably already do for your clients, but making you see that they also apply for your agency. You need to be doing these things to make sure you're getting not just bums on seats, but shit hot recruiters or newbies with loads of potential. So, one of the things that I'd recommend you do is make it more than one stage. So I know that time is of the essence at the moment. People are going off the market quickly. I totally, totally get it. But it gives you the chance to meet somebody once, go away and think about it and bring them back and then obviously see if they're the same person as well. So you might want to, for example, make the first stage a CV run through, a relax, more of a relaxed chat. Second stage, a little bit more serious. But I think by having two stages, you can get people in, more people involved, but you can see this person at two different stages and make a decision based on a much more thorough process. Candidates often expect it to be more than one stage anyway. And again, it exudes professionalism that you've got a process to your interviews. If they're experienced, you can't just rely on their billing figures alone, okay? They might not even be true. So first of all, you need to have time to probe enough around those figures. I'd want to be seeing proof, to be honest with you. Any good recruiter has got their figures memorized and probably in a spreadsheet or at least a record of them. So ask them to bring them along, have a chat with them about them. But you also, you don't want to just be focusing on the billings. You need to focus on the person as well. So give yourself the time to chat to them, learn about them as a person. What do they get up to outside of work? What are their hobbies? What do they enjoy about their job? What do they find challenging? Ask the softer questions that actually tell you a lot over the factual figures type questions. My next tip ties in with that slightly is I'm a big believer in uh, behavioural profiling. I do a lot of it myself, I'm a licensed trainer in DISC, and with the agencies that I work with that want me to support them with the hiring process, we DISC profile every candidate that gets to final stage. Now, this doesn't affect our hiring decision purely because any personality can do recruitment, it's about how they do it differently, but it gives us a deeper understanding of the person and it enables us to tailor our questions. So that's a great way for you to make your interviews even more thorough and personalized to that person as well. One of the things I wanna to touch on is it doesn't matter whether they have 10 years of experience or they're brand new to recruitment, you've got to do a proper interview process. There's a number of reasons. First of all, how can you expect to get to know somebody properly to find out whether they are the right fit for your agency they've got the right attitude, they've got the right experience if you're looking for somebody experienced, if you only speak to them for 20 minutes. It, I mean, it's just not going to cut it. Like, would you let somebody come and live in your house if you'd only spoken to, to them for 20 minutes? No, well, I know I wouldn't anyway. So this is similar, you're asking them to be a part of your business, to contribute to the bottom line, to come, become part of the culture. You need to get to know them properly. So bear that in mind, but also your interview process projects how professional your agency is. It's a first impression. So if you're trying to attract talent to your agency, the processes need to be refined. So this is gonna help you with all of that today. Don't be put off by adding extra parts to your process, so two stages if you usually do one. You're gonna get rid of the crap, basically, because anybody that doesn't wanna be a part of that professional process, uh, for example, I worked with an agency before, we had a final stage of presentation, it really wasn't that hard, it was five minutes, and one girl said she didn't want to do it because she felt that she was too experienced to be doing a presentation. Fine, don't come. 
If you're too lazy and can't be bothered to put the effort in to come and work for a brilliant agency, we don't want you there. So it's gonna sift out the crap and the people that are trying to cut corners and haven't got the right work ethic. So it's actually gonna help you in the long run. Attract talent, but attract the right kind of talent as well. If they're new to recruitment, so they've never done it before, I understand that it's hard to know what the hell to cover off with them in the interview because they've never done recruitment before. This is quite a big subject. So if you want to learn more about this, I would recommend you watch this video where I go into massive amount of detail on how to interview newbies. I've been doing it for about seven years now and that will help you with that process. Make sure in the interview, probably at the end, that you ask, just as you would with candidates, what else they've got going on because you need to understand if they could potentially go off the market quickly. If you've interviewed a very strong trainee or experienced consultant, you don't want to lose them by waiting too long. So if they've got other interviews, you know the next stage needs to be moved quicker. So always ask what else they've got going on, what other agencies they've been applying to, but also it's interesting to find out if they're applying for jobs in any industry. That shows then, well, are they actually even that interested in recruitment? So it's a really worthwhile question and will give you an insight into their job searching activities. But next tip, and again, I would do this at the end as well, ask who else they know that's looking to get into recruitment or is looking for a move out of their agency, because the likelihood is that you've probably got more than one position. And if they've got friends that they work with that are unhappy in that agency, or if they're a trainee and they know somebody else looking to get into the role, snap them up and get them through a recommendation instead of having to pay to advertise on the job boards or investing in lots of time on LinkedIn searching for people. Referrals are king, so do what you would do with your candidates and ask these candidates for your consultant roles who they know that could be a fantastic fit for your agency. Make sure that you close them at the end as well. So at the end of the interview, I would probably do this, you can do it two ways. So if you've got two stages, at the end of the first stage, ask them, look, based on today, if we were happy to progress you to the next stage, would you want to go forward? If you're at final with them, ask them, and even more important, if they have got other interviews going on. After today, if we were to come back to you and let you know that you've been successful and offer you the role, would you be happy to accept? So you're getting an indication straight away as to whether you are a dead set yes for them or whether they're, not, whether they're unsure. The beauty of that question is if they are unsure, they might even say yes, but you sense the to in their tone of voice they're not sure, you can ask them why. You know, what else do you need to know from us to feel more confident in our agency, for example? So that is a really key question and it gives you a lot more certainty on whether they would accept if that's what it comes to. And be clever in your interviews. Throughout the interview, make sure you're finding out what they want from a company, what they want from a role, in general, what they're looking for. So when you come to the point where you're gonna talk a little bit more about the agency and sell to them, you can tailor that sell and really hone in on the things that are important to them. Obviously, you're not gonna leave out details that maybe don't match. We all need to be transparent but go in with the things they say they do want first, so they're really hooked into the opportunity. My final tip is for God's sake, please make sure you're organized. It does not come across well if you are rushing around, you're coming into the room flustered, you're late because you're on another call. This person is interviewing you as much as you were interviewing them. And if they've got other things going on and they've come into the agency and it's chaos or you're keeping them waiting, they're making a judgment on you straight away, just as you would be doing to them. So make the effort, be organized, give the best impression possible of your agency because those are the types of things that can be the decider between a yes and a no. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I would love to hear your comments on this subject. Please, any discussions you want, any questions you've got, just any comments at all, chuck them in the comments box. I always, always respond. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.